Good evening from the Channel's newsroom here in London. At least six protesters have been killed and dozens injured during clashes with security forces in Sudan. Despite the violence, demonstrators are refusing to give up their fight for a full civilian government. Protesters say soldiers were behind the gunfire which claimed lives, but the army is blaming unidentified elements. It comes just a day after a political transition deal between the opposition and the military rulers was secured. The balance of power is still an issue. لن نطلق رصاصة واحدة في وامي القوات المسلحة أو قوات الدعم السريع أو أي قوات نظامية أخرى على أفراد شعبنا المعتصمين لأي أغراض نحن ذاتنا معهم فيها ولكن نكرر كذلك لن نسمح بالفوضى لأن الفوضى بعدين وبال على هذا الشعب ما بيستحق الشعب السوداني يصل لمصير ما وصلت إليه بعض الشعوب حوله. The WhatsApp cyber attack has been referred to the U.S. Department of Justice. Hackers exposed a major vulnerability by remotely installing spyware on smartphones and computers through the voice call function, even when the call wasn't picked up. The software was reportedly developed by Israeli firm NSO Group. WhatsApp, which is owned by Facebook, says a select number of users were targeted and that the breach has the hallmarks of a private company working with governments on surveillance. One 1.5 billion users around the world are now being urged to update the app. A fix was rolled out on Friday. These softwares that NSO is marketing as tools to prevent terror and crime are used against human rights defenders and lawyers and doctors and members of parliament. We are not criminals and we are not terrorists. And the, when the Ministry of Defense in Israel allows this to happen, it endangers millions of people around the world. There's growing unrest in Sri Lanka with Muslims being targeted across the country. Police are trying to control mobs who have been attacking mosques and shops, ransacking and destroying them as retribution for the Easter bombings which killed more than 250 people. One man was stabbed to death during a commotion as crowds burnt Qurans. A service has been held in Paris for two special forces officers who died during a rescue operation in Burkina Faso. Crowds lined the streets to honor Cédric de Pierre-Pont and Alain Berton Kello, who were killed during the raid, which saved two French tourists, an American and a South Korean. The French president, Emmanuel Macron, described them as heroes who sacrificed their lives to save others. The United States and Russia are working on their relationship. The U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, who's in Moscow, told the Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov, that it's time to start a new constructive way of working together. President Trump is committed to improving this relationship. Uh, as, as I think you said, we have differences. We, each country will uh, protect its own interests, look out for its own interests of its people. Um, but it's not, it's not destined that we're adversaries on every issue, and I hope that we can find places where we have a set of overlapping interests and can truly begin to build out uh, strong relationships. Former U.S. Congressman Anthony Weiner has been released from custody. He was sentenced to 21 months in jail for sending sexually explicit messages to a 15-year-old girl. Weiner was released from prison in February and had served the remainder of his term in a halfway house in New York. He ran for city mayor in 20. 13, but dropped out of the race when the lewd messages became public. I am glad to be getting back to my family. I hope to be able to live a, a life of integrity and service, and um, I'm glad this chapter of my life is behind me. And finally, a British motor enthusiast has set a new land speed record in a tuk-tuk.
The vehicle, which was bought on eBay, reached a speed of 119.6 kilometers per hour, beating the previous record of 110 kilometers per hour. Matt Everard spent more than $25,000 fitting it out. He says he now aims to break 160 kilometers per hour. And that's your international news around the world in five.